This week in the galley, we're in Anaheim, California at Eat Street, and standing next to me is Kate. She's a chef here, and this is her own business where she does cooking lessons, and she's been kind enough to invite us down to show us how to cook up a fish dish. And what is it you have for us today, Kate? We are going to be making halibut with a chipotle adobo sun-dried tomato sauce. Cool, that sounds neat. So how do we get started? Going to take one or two tablespoons of chipotle, uh, depending on how much spice you like. I like spice. I do too, I like it spicy. So one if you're not into too much spice, two if you are into spice. So two tablespoons adobo, reconstituted sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. And so in this situation, you're gonna take a cup into here and into your blender. Then you're going to take a half cup of olives. They don't have to be chopped up crazy because your blender is going to do the work for you. So you can chop them just a little bit, anchor it with your left hand. Just to break them up a little bit? Yep, and into your blender. Next thing you're going to need is a half cup of orange juice. Uh, this adds a little bit of tang, a little bit of sweetness. Then you're going to use a tablespoon of vinegar. I like to use apple cider vinegar just because it's a little bit more complex than your generic distilled white vinegar. So apple cider vinegar into your blender. Two big pinches of pepper. Same thing with salt. So one pinch, two pinch. Does salt and pepper make that big of a difference in every dish? Because yes. just about every dish I see people add salt and pepper. The salt brings out the flavor of everything. It's crazy. When you're cooking, especially something like an onion, if you put salt in there, all of a sudden it's just vibrant. So yeah, salt's important. Next thing, you're gonna take a half of a diced onion right into your blender. And last but not least, just a little bit of olive oil to get it moving, about a tablespoon. Put your lid on and zoom it around. So that's our sauce and now. And we're done. Easy. And that's Easy. what's nice about halibut. It's it's like a rockfish in the sense that it absorbs just about any flavor you add to it. Yeah. A normal portion is about five, so I'm gonna cut this in half. You wanna use a pan uh, that is not Teflon coated. Olive oil. You're gonna take your five ounces of halibut into your hot olive oil. So it's gonna cook just like this from the it's bottom up. It's already cooking, look how quick it's yeah, cooking. Yeah, just like that. Uh, right after you put it in, you're gonna wanna loosen it up, just make sure it's not stuck. So if we were using a Teflon pan, it, the fish wouldn't taste as well? The, the flavors actually stick to the bottom of the pan, so whether it's pork or beef or fish, you always wanna use this kind of a pan. I always say Teflon's just for eggs and crepes. The beauty about halibut is it's a flaky fish, uh -huh. and when cooked just right, mm -hmm. it will be flaky and melt in your mouth. You wanna make sure you don't overcook it. When it meets in the middle, it's, it's done. If you keep cooking it, just like chicken, it will get tough, even if you're starting with the best of the best. With a five ounce piece of fish, it's gonna take about eight minutes. Put it right onto your plate. Kind of salsa. Goes just right over the top like this. Try some of the sauce, the magic secret sauce. Not a secret anymore. <laughs> That is good. Isn't it good? The sauce. That sauce I love. You can even use that like on a fish taco. Yeah. This is really great. You guys have to try this dish. Cook this at home. It's just a beautiful, great dish. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Dan. We appreciate you helping us out today. Of course. And Kate's located in Anaheim, California. You can go to our website and get more information. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing.